Hola y bienvenidos a todos a los amigos de Mindalia. Estamos en el Hotel Palace de Madrid y hoy tenemos un invitado de, de lujo. Eh, quien me acompaña y yo nunca habíamos pensado que íbamos a poder entrevistar a, y tener de cerca a Greg Braden. Eh, Greg, Greg Braden es eh, científico, es físico y bueno, pues es uno de los que impulsan eh, la unión de la ciencia y la espiritualidad. Eh, y lo tenemos hoy con nosotros. Greg Braden, how are you doing? I am doing very well. I'm happy to be here in Spain. We are here for a big conference this weekend, Being One Conference. And uh, it's a very fast trip for me. Um, I am leaving from here to go directly to the CERN uh, laboratories in Geneva immediately following this. So it's a big trip for me. Oh, wow. So está encantado de estar en España. Además, eh, eh, formar parte del de gran evento que va a ocurrir este fin de semana, Being One, y que de aquí va a estar. Ma mañana es tomorrow when you're going? Tomorrow I speak and the next day I... Ok, ya. Yeah. Mañana está en el Bing One y el día siguiente ya se va a otro evento a, en, a Génova. En eh, la entrevista también está conmigo Diana López Iriarte. Diana, ¿qué tal? Encantada y muy feliz. Es un honor para mí poder estar aquí con Greg Braden. So, vamos. Eh, I know that she has many questions. Sé que ella tiene un montón de cuestiones. Eh, let's go start. Pues en, en uno de los primeros vídeos que me, me, me impactó mucho es que hablabas del corazón como un dispositivo de energía electromagnética que impacta en la realidad. So in in uh, one of the first videos that she saw about yourself is that you talk about this uh, field of energy that we have in our heart, this electromagnetic field. Impacta en la realidad y cuando está en coherencia y sintiendo amor es como capaz de transformar la materia. And uh, when um, this electromagnetic field impart into the outer wall and is full with this high vibration. Eh, bueno, en, en realidad no hay diferencia entre lo de fuera y lo de dentro. Somos uno, como dice el, 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 evento, el evento que estamos. Eh, la cuestión es eh, cómo ocurre que el amor que sentimos puede cambiar tanto nuestra vida que se hagan realidad los sueños, como por ejemplo este hoy para mí, de estar entrevistándote y tantos otros que cuanto más amor siento se están cumpliendo. Que nos expliques un poco cómo ocurre esto. Uh, she mentioned also that there is no difference, be the difference between the outer wall and the inner wall and uh, uh, she want to know why uh, um, by loving ourselves or, or, or getting higher this vibration in our heart, how does it happen that the external reality have an impact? She's, she's thinking that she, the more she's okay with her, the external reality is like better. So how, how this happened? Yeah, what the, uh, I'm trained as a scientist, and um, I'm a geologist, I'm an earth scientist by degree, I have a background in computer science and ocean science, mathematics and physics, and it all works together to help me understand our relationship to the world. So are you going to translate then as I go through, or? Yes. Yeah, no. Okay, so what the science is showing us is it's very difficult to know where we end and the world begins. Uh, that we are part of and not separate from the world. The science is now showing us that it is the relationship between the heart and the brain together uh, that creates this uh, experience, this interface that we have with the world. We were taught that the brain is the master organ in the body, and the brain is important, but now the, the new science is showing that the instructions for the brain come from the heart. So the heart is telling the brain what to do. So we have two organs, the heart and the brain, two separate organs, but one system that works together. And this is where the teachings of our ancient uh, spiritual traditions come in because they've always told us, not in science, but they understood this relationship. And they said, when we can feel compassion, appreciation, gratitude, care in our heart, that what we're actually doing is we are loving ourselves. And now the science is telling us when we feel those feelings, we establish a connection between the heart and the brain, and the brain releases the chemistry into the body that heals the body. Uh, so this is the science is catching up with what we already have known, but uh, intuitively. And now we're able to, to validate this in science. And the more that science can validate it, the more that we can teach it and that we can share it on a large scale in a world that needs as much love as possible. Yeah. 
Thank you for that. ¿Y, ¿Y cómo fue que nos olvidamos de este corazón y hemos creado una sociedad tan mental por la quema de la Biblioteca de Alejandría? ¿Hemos perdido eh, información de las antiguas tradiciones? Y ella uh, está preguntando cómo ha pasado que nos olvidamos de este corazón. ¿Por qué crees que esto ha pasado? You know, no one really knows. Uh, the, what the science is now showing is that humans originated in this world in a way very different from what we have been taught. Uh, evolution uh, is a fact for some forms of life. Evolution does not explain human existence. What the science now shows is that humans appeared suddenly 200,000 years ago with nothing leading up to us. The DNA is now showing us that 200,000 years ago, there was a fusion, a very precise fusion of DNA that makes us who we are, and, and evolution cannot account for that. 200,000 years ago, we appeared with all of the extraordinary abilities that we have today. We appeared with the nervous system, the, uh, the brain, twice as large as any other form of, uh, of, of our nearest primate relatives, twice as large. It's called the neocortex, appeared suddenly because of this DNA fusion. So it appears that we are intended to have these extraordinary abilities. Uh, and as we acknowledge that uh, and embrace this, this truth, the question is how do we awaken these abilities? How do we apply these things in our lives? Now, I have spent much of my adult life exploring the monasteries uh, and the, the shamans and the monks and the nuns and the abbots and the indigenous, the kundaros, the healers, mm -hmm. to find out what they knew. And what we now understand is that the extraordinary abilities of the monks and the nuns and the shamans are actually ordinary abilities that we all have. Mm -hmm and we're simply learning to awaken these abilities. Exactly, so, so how? So, what, so for example, let me just share, yeah. deep intuition. We all have intuition sometimes. And you say, how did that happen? Can I do it again? Mm -hmm. We can trigger the intuition on demand, uh, super learning, where we look, we look at the, the words on, on a page of a book and remember every word, total recall from when we come into a room. <clears throat> we have the ability to trigger the anti-aging hormones in our bodies. We all have them, wow. but we can, we can trigger them Im immediately. We have the ability to trigger a very powerful immune system. Mm -hmm. These are all abilities that we have in our everyday lives that we have been taught are extraordinary, but they are really ordinary. And they come from the ability to harmonize the heart and the brain together. 1991, scientists discovered 40,000 special cells in the human heart. They are called sensory neurites. Uh, they're like brain cells, but they're not in the brain, they're in the heart. So we now know that there are, there's a place in our heart that thinks, it remembers, and it feels independently of the brain in our head. So we can use the brain, we can use the heart, or we can harmonize and use the heart and the brain together, and that is what gives us the ability to thrive in the world that's changing very, very fast right now. Mm -hmm. That's a long answer to a short oh, question. Really, thank you, thank yeah. you. So I appreciate that. So I appreciate that. Very interesting. Además, me, me viene justo para la pregunta que queríamos hacer. And it's coming really good for the next question she wanted to uh, make okay. to you. Bueno, eh, bueno, yo también trabajo ayudando a, a despertar a personas. Y estoy percibiendo, y quería saber si tú también tienes esa percepción, que cada vez es más fácil despertar a las personas y como que hay una apertura en el nivel de conciencia, en el nivel de vibración. Uh, so she's saying that she feels that people now, even though if they are not spiritual, people is more aware, more conscious, uh, like the kind of the vibration of the, 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 the planet is high. What would you think about this? I agree. I think, I think there is a new wisdom emerging. Mm -hmm. In the old days, we were taught it's either science or it's spirituality 
or its religion. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're finding now is that when we marry the science, the best science of the modern world, in 5,000 years of wisdom from the past, when we marry these together, we give ourselves a wisdom that is more, it's greater than science alone. It's more than spirituality alone. It's a new wisdom that is emerging in the world. Uh, the spirituality is good, the science is good. The world is changing in ways that we have never seen. And we have no guidebook to tell us what to do. So I believe, I personally believe, that we owe it to ourselves to draw from the best wisdom possible, all, all wisdom, all wisdom from everywhere, from the ancient traditions, from the ancient texts, from quantum physics, from science, bring it all together and weave it into a new way of thinking, a new way of knowing, and I think this is where we're going right now. It's a, it's a new wisdom that's more than spirituality and science mm -hmm. or religion. And, and I think it's important for this reason. We have been separated in the past uh, by the thinking of religion mm -hmm. and spirituality sometimes and science and all of these things. And this is a time where we are coming together. Uh, we have outgrown the old ideas, and we are maturing into a new way of seeing the world and a new way of seeing ourselves. Yeah. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. it's like a game. Yeah, it yeah, is. Let's see where it takes us. Yeah, well, we have to survive the game. Yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Muy importante. <laughs> That's sí. it. Y es, esto está elevando el nivel de conciencia, el nivel de vibración, o además tiene que ver con la frecuencia de vibración del, de la Tierra. Estos 7,8 vercios que están elevándose, ¿tiene todo que ver con un proceso evolutivo del planeta en sí? Sí, se ha about, she's talking about the 7,8 hertz. Is, uh, is, is this helping uh, to this to happen, to this uh, vibration being higher? What the, the science is actually showing is, this is fascinating to me. We have known for a long time that humans are influenced by the magnetic fields of the Earth. Mm -hmm. for, so, so, for example, uh, solar cycles, uh, when they are strong and when they are weak, they influence social change. Mm -hmm. When the magnetic fields are low, for example, mm -hmm. uh, humans are more uh, aggressive. Uh, and you can actually draw, I, I do this in my book, you can draw a chart of the cycles mm -hmm of war and peace linked to the solar cycles uh, of, of the planet. So we've known that Earth influences us. Here's what's new. Mm -hmm. Now we are understanding that we influence the Earth. It's that amazing. It is amazing. And the way that it was discovered, it was a tragedy. It was uh, September 11th, 2001. All right. uh, scientists, we have satellites that measure the magnetic fields of the Earth. And every 30 minutes, they send back to the scientists of the Earth, they say, this is what the magnetic fields are doing. And every day, the fields, they ebb and they flow, they rise and they fall. One day, these magnetic fields that go right off the chart, scientists said, well, what's happening? And they looked, it was, it was 15 minutes after the first plane hit the first tower of the World Trade Center in New York City, September 11, 2001. Scientists believe that the television images it took about 15 minutes for the television, the satellites, and the television images to be carried around the world and for hundreds and millions of people to see the images and to react from their hearts. They had, some were fear, some were uh, angry, uh, some were uh, in shock, but it was all heart-based experiences. Here's why that's important. The heart is the strongest magnetic field generator in the human body, much stronger than, uh, thousands of times stronger than the brain. What scientists believe is that hundreds of millions of people simultaneously seeing the images created a heart experience that coupled with the earth magnetic field and strengthened the magnetic field of the earth. Here's why that's important. For the first few days after 9-11, people on Earth, it was, we were a family. We were very close. New York City, uh, London, Paris, 
people were a family. They hugged one another. They looked in the eyes. At, le it, at least for a few days, we were one. And scientists believe that is because the magnetic fields were, were strong. And then the magnetic fields were weakened again, and everyone went back to the way they were before. So now the question is, can we strengthen those fields without having a tragedy? Can we do it because we choose? And the answer is yes. So this is a science-based project teaching people to create the feeling from their heart, to feed the fields of the earth, uh, to, because when the magnetic fields are high, we are more cooperative, less aggressive. And if we ever needed the time to be more cooperative and less aggressive, I think now is the time. It's called GCI, Global Coherence Initiative, uh, the Institute of Heart Math, H-E-A-R-T, capital M-A-T-H. Uh, they are pioneering this project. I'm, I'm steering, on the steering committee of the project. I believe in this project. But it's an example of we're understanding what it means to be human in a new way allows us to influence in a positive way the outcome of our time in history. And it's using a very ancient wisdom to do yeah, that. It is. It's, it's a beautiful opportunity. Eso es, es una, una gran misión participar entonces de eventos como Being One mm -hmm. que ayuden a esta coherencia para poder, to, to, to to, poder cambiar el mundo y, y que entre en coherencia y que haya más amor. It is, but it's, it's beautiful in this way because we are now coming full circle. We began with ancient understandings, and then science came along and said, forget that. Mm -hmm. And science told us we're separate from the earth. And now the science that told us we're separate is leading us back to the connection because of the discoveries. And it's happening at a time when the world is changing so fast, we need that connection. So I think it's perfect. Perfecto. Muy bien. Muy bien. <laughs> eh, Teníamos una, tenías una pregunta sobre el propósito también. Es interesante ya para ir cerrando. Sí, se acerca de la pregunta de eh, la pregunta más importante que podemos hacernos. Muchas personas están buscando su propósito de vida y la pregunta sería qué tienen para compartir, para ayudar a, a, a esto que estamos hablando, a ser uno, a que, el, a que seamos todos más amor y más felices. Uh, in one of your in one of your videos, you mentioned that uh, she saw that there is a question that we should ask to ourselves: is that, uh, yeah, what do I have to share, and to the world? To the world. And through that question, you might find uh, your purpose or your mission. So can you tell us anything else about this? Well, we live in a culture in a society where we are conditioned to ask uh, what. What can I get from the world? You know, what does the world owe me? And when we understand the deep connection, the question must change from what can I get from the world to what, what is it that I can give to the world? Uh, and it makes a lot of sense because the more that we can give and share, uh, the more complete, the, the more connected we, we become through the act of sharing. Um, and it takes a lot of work to change that thinking. It's a very different way of thinking. Um, when I was 10 years old, my father left my family when I was 10. And uh, it was a very difficult time. And I, ha I had to go to work uh, at a very early, I lied about my age to get a good job in a factory. I worked in a copper factory. Um, and my mother gave me a book at that time by uh, a man, uh, he was called the prophet. His name was Khalil Gibran. I don't know if you know Khalil Gibran. He wrote a, okay, I, I read this book in, when, when I was 10 years old. And each chapter of the book is only about one, one and a half pages, but it's very, very intense. And he wrote a chapter about work. And what Khalil Gibran said, he said, work is love made visible. When we work, it's the visible expression of our love. And I remembered that, uh, and it has stayed with me every job that I've ever had, no matter if I was loading uh, dog food on boxcars I used to do for the railroad, or I used to work in the factory, 
no matter what, what the work, uh, when I would think that this is my love made visible, it was easier for me to do a good job. The reason I say that is because the things we're talking about, it's a very different way to think about the world for some people. But if we can all think that the work that it takes to change the way we think, it's our love made visible. Uh, I think the world is worth it. I think we are worth the effort. I think we're worth that work to become the best people that we can be and create the best world possible. Reach our ma maximum potential, isn't it? Maximum yeah. potential, that's it. <laughs> No, me, me ha gustado mucho esa definición del trabajo sí. con el amor. Y nos quedamos con eso, ¿no? De, sí. de, de que todos consigamos encontrar esa parte nuestra donde podemos expresar nuestro máximo nuestro potencial amor. y nuestro amor. Eh, Greg Braden, it's been an honor and a pleasure to to be able to talk to you, and uh, I hope that many people actually during the next days in Bingwan they are going to get a lot from what you have been talking to us now. When will people see this? Eh, tonight. tonight. So, para la gente que nos está viendo ahora, Greg Braden estará durante los próximos días, eh, precisamente mañana, en el Congreso Bing One. Así que, si os gusta lo que habéis escuchado, pues ya sabéis, las entradas siguen todavía a la venta. So, can I speak to our sure. sure. I, what I'd like to do, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank each and every one of you for everything that you're doing in your life to become the best person that you can be to create the best so, world so possible. Great. So, dice que les quiere agradecer a todos eh, y cada uno de vosotros que intentáis y trabajáis por convertiros en, pues eso, en la mejor versión de, de vosotros mismos. We need you all, we love you all. <laughs> os necesitamos a todos y os amamos a todos. <laughs> Thank you, Greg <laughs> Chao. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. <laughs>